All right, so welcome everybody to this week's edition of Blog Talk TV Tuesdays. I'm your host, Bess Hour. Co-host, introduce yourself. Let me know who you are. Hey everybody, my name is John Perpignan. I am with Design Theory, and I am happy to be here to share some really cool tools with y'all and talk and learn just as well as we can offer some information. Yeah, yeah, we've got an empty seat. So, so John and I thought we'd talk a little bit about um, Orlando IX, and I hear my dog again, so I'll be right back. Orlando okay. IX and Isaiah Fest, mm-hmm. and then a little bit about our favorite tools. Hang on one yeah. second. Yeah, um, Best was out there uh, the last two weeks, actually. So two weeks ago uh, to Orlando IX, and that was a big event um, here in Orlando and um, like a tech event, if, if you're not too familiar with it. But um, she was there for that. And then uh, right behind that, she was uh, this past weekend. For <laughs> Don't make me call mine. <laughs> Justice was here. He'd be upset. <laughs> Oh, Michael says it's currently pouring in Indy. You know, ours is a very light rain, yeah. and I think it's the remains of Patricia kind of wandering across uh, Mexico and Texas, and it's slowly making its way here. But uh, we've been dry, so we'll, we'll take the rain. So I, I shouldn't complain. Yeah, but, really. Yeah, it, it has been really dry, actually. Yeah. Yeah, as soon as, as soon as my husband starts running the sprinklers, I'm like, well, I guess we've been without rain for a mm-hmm. little while. I, use, I lose track of stuff like that, except my water bill starts going up. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, so yeah, so I went to Orlando IX. I yeah. actually have my Orlando IX hey, shirt on. Those are really cool shirts. Yeah, yeah. So we, we have the Alakeola fountain, I guess the roller coasters and uh, you know and, and castles in response to uh, a Disney. But you yeah, know what? Yep. We are so much more than uh, let me see and try and get it all the way in than Disney. In fact, uh, there was a big campaign in Orlando to come up with a new slogan. And so they came up with Orlando, you don't know the half of it. Meaning everybody knows about Disney, but yeah. nobody really knows the, the happening tech scene mm-hmm. that is here. So Orlando is making a push to be like Austin or to be like um, the next Silicon Valley of the South. Yeah. And they're really doing a great job. We've got a, a really thriving community here. And so David Glass, um, came into town. He moved here from Tampa and he really wanted to start what would be the next South by Southwest. That was his, his vision. This was the first year of it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, they, they did a good job. It was, it was a small start, but you know what? Uh, it was exciting to have some things happening here in Orlando. Mm-hmm. So are you off? Have a good time. So, um, what did you, you didn't get a chance to go out to any of the sessions for Orlando I, IX. No, no, I, w- I wasn't able to, I couldn't get out to make it, but, um, you know, I heard a lot about it. I was watching Twitter um, and just to kind of keep up with things that were going on. It, it, there were so many really cool pictures of stuff that was going on. Um, it really seemed like a really fun event. Um, I, 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 my heart goes out. I was like, I wish I could have been actually to, to both to tell you the truth. Hopefully next year I, I'll make a, I'll make better plans so that I could be available to go. <laughs> well, let's hope they do stick around for a second year. I think it's great for Orlando. Yeah. So, um, Orlando is number, I think one in the nation for 3d modeling okay. and simulation gaming. So we have EA sports here. We have Lockheed Martin. Yep. We have full sail here, which is yep. one of the top universities in the nation for, um, for broadcasting mm-hmm. sound mixing and stuff. So we we do have some already some tech stuff here and of course we've got disney you don't get much more innovative than disney right. so uh we we have a real good start and they're doing some things the city of orlando and orange county to uh you know city what you could jump on if you wanted to and talk about some of the initiatives orange county is mm-hmm. doing to bring some some gaming and tech companies here we have a we have a great accelerator called the starter studio here yep. that was started by greg pollock yep. of uh Code School. So Code School, I think, was recently bought for like 36 million by, you know, a huge parent company. But uh, Greg Pollock, the founder, is here in Orlando. And so he's the one that gives back by setting up this incubator. So we're kind of prime. We Plus, we have UCF. UCF has this great, great entrepreneurial and kind of tech focus. So we're primed to uh, to do some cool stuff. So hats yeah. off to Orlando IX. They had some neat stuff. One of my favorite sessions that they had. So the, the weekend was a big gaming and people showed off uh, mm-hmm. some of the new games. They had some 3D simulators, some virtual reality stuff. Yep. Um, but one of my favorite sessions, at, so that was the weekend and the, the Monday and Tuesday were, were talks and they brought in people from all over and they brought in the C uh, Pluricite. So there we go. Thank you, M. Dixon. Yeah, yeah. Bought by Tr- Pluricite. And uh-huh. some exciting stuff. I know they were about for quite a lot. Um, okay. So, uh, 
the, the neat thing was that they brought in some big names to talk. One of my favorite talks was uh, the CIO of the NFL, Michelle McKenna. And so she came in and interestingly enough, she was actually work, used to work for Disney before she got hired away by the NFL. Um, and so it was fun uh, listening to her talk about all the technology and stuff that the NFL is doing. Whitney, hello. Talk for me. Hey, can you hear me? Okay, yes, perfect. Good. Enough. Yeah. So <laughs> Whitney, why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do. Sure. Well, I'm Whitney Ramirez and I do social media and uh, web management for Orange County government here in Orlando. Nice. Um, and then you mentioned some of the technology initiatives that we have going on. Uh, Orlando is actually the capital of modeling simulation and training in the world. It's the biggest cluster in the world for companies that do uh, MSNT. And we recently had a Florida simulation summit um, and we highlighted uh, simulation across a bunch of different industries, including transportation, entertainment like Disney and Universal, um, education like there was a, a professor that was like teaching a virtual classroom it was really really cool um and stuff like that just getting the word out there that even the people that have lived in orlando their whole lives don't know all this good stuff that's going on no it's true it's true a lot because i'm i'm from orlando i have third generation well actually fourth generation third generation born in orlando and it's so exciting to see all the changes happening hello muhammad how are you Oh, Muhammad, we can't hear you. Uh-oh, I think you're going to have to change your microphone settings. Nope, microphone's not working there, Muhammad. So, Hamid, Muhammad, what you do is you, oh, there we go. Sorry, Muhammad, you need to change your media set settings for the microphone. Yep. So, jump back on in a minute. Yep. Okay, so, Whitney, so what sort of things can we look forward to in the future? Are there any sort of initiatives to bring more tech people here wait wait wait, wait. before you okay. answer before you answer have that oh because i've been like waiting to get this out um if you can if you know anything about creative village and what's happening with that please um uh talk about that too i don't i don't know about creative village unfortunately sorry no. <laughs> um, I, I know the simulation summit will be coming back next year for sure um okay. And then in January, we have the Economic Summit, which is when Mayor Jacobs highlights uh, the scene of what's going on in Orlando just in the business okay. aspect. So there's that. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Um, I know we have like a giant holiday heroes toy drive going on. Yeah, okay. they're very cool. Very cool. Well, te tech wise, I know there's a big push. Um, just to get as many you know tech companies to take notice of what a great and thriving environment we have here so very mm -hmm. cool so muhammad can we hear you yet go ahead and say something buddy oh, oh we lost. All right, muhammad. <laughs> so there we go yeah, we're actually working with uh canvas to do some toy collections and promote them like lots of love going around that, so. hey uh, joe where's joe Joe's hey, in Nashville. Tell us where you are, Joe. Nashville at the downtown Hilton. Who do you have with you? John Emmett. Hello. Hello, with John. Flexera Software. He's what? He's with Flexera Software. Ah, very cool. So you ever come to Orlando? What's that? Does John ever come to Orlando? Yeah, he's been there before. Oh, yes, many times. Software-wise, though, work-wise. Oh, what do you do there software-wise, work-wise in Orlando? Uh, well, we go we go to events down there mainly uh, for for uh, marketing marketing uh, you know trade shows. Very cool. Is the is the conference going well, Joe? Yes. Yeah, we've got uh, the rest of today, and then um, we're done at uh, four o'clock, four thirty. Okay, and, and tell everybody what conference this is. It's a IT procurement summit. This is the twentieth annual. Um, Mm. Uh, gosh, we have four breakouts. We we uh, help people with procurement, large, right. large procurement, so, so, stuff like that. that so, good. Whitney, will you repeat what you said about Orlando being the capital of what for modeling and simulation? Yeah, it's the it's the worldwide capital of modeling, simulation, and training. It's the biggest concentration of companies out in Research Park by UCF. 
And so we're talking 3D modeling, virtual simulation, really cool stuff, right? Education, transportation, entertainment, pretty much everything. Almost every industry uses simulation in some way. Did you did you get a chance? Have you seen the, the three simulation machines they have at the library at the Melrose Center downtown? Bye, Joe. Um, no, Bye, but Jen. I've heard great things. Yeah, they um so I I recently did um and, and not to take away from from the topic, just just to add more to what's going on downtown. Um, but uh probably about maybe two, three months, maybe three months ago, I, I did the, uh, the the orientation, which you have to do in order to get into the Melrose Center to kind of see what's going on. And uh, they have three simulation machines. One is like an excavator. Another one is a flight simulator. And I forget what the third one is, um, but they're really cool. And they're they're right there up front. And, and you know, they really look state of the art. And then they've also got um, these, these tech centers, um, these tech labs, really, inside the Melrose Center. One, they've got a couple of 3D printers, I believe. They've got like... Uh, Almost like I think it's like a chemistry lab or something like that, but they've got like these things where you can come in if you've built your own something and you're not sure how to fabricate a piece to make it work, or you broke something and you want to bring it in to get it fixed and whatever. You can actually bring that in there, um, and they can help. They'll help you on these on, on on any well not any given day, but on specific given days during the week um, to you know fix your product, you know fix your device or, or not like a device, but something that you built, like something that you fabricated. Um, they help you with this, which is pretty cool. Um, you know, all around to hear that all this stuff is going on, you know, around Orlando that, you know, most don't even know about, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, like produce a film in the Melrose Center. <laughs> See? Yeah, exactly. You can do you that. You can, <laughs> yeah, you can do a film, a movie, you could do a movie. I mean, you could do a, a newscast in there. You could do, they have like these really good HD cameras. They've got sound booths that pipe into the, the, the studio. Um, it's, yeah, I was, I was kind of floored. I was like, wow, I can't believe you could do all this stuff. And, and, you know, it's all, you know, obviously pay without tax dollars, but you know, for the most part, it's free. Yeah. So I'm going to put a real quick, um, link to the Melrose center just for, for our friends who, you know, maybe if you visit the Melrose or visit Orange County, you might stop by and check it out. Um, this is a public library. So free to anybody that has a, a library card for Orange County. So they're doing some cool stuff. And then I'm also going to put a link to Full Sail because they are one of the top, uh, I'm echoing, one of the top schools in the world of its kind. So check out both of those yeah. when you get a chance. Yeah. So, um, uh, so that was Orlando IX. That was a few weeks ago. This past weekend, I went to Isaiah Fest. Now, Whitney, were you at Isaiah Fest? I missed Isaiah Fest, unfortunately. <laughs> so Isaiah is one of the, the top companies in the world. They pioneer the idea of sponsored social. So Ted Murphy, who lives right here in Orlando, um, had this idea that he could connect brands with bloggers to do campaigns or with online influencers. And he started so early that brands and marketing people just thought he was the most evil person. He's like, what do you mean you want people to pay for a blogger to write about them. I mean, it was unheard of when he pioneered this. Mm -hmm. And he, his story is amazing, his founder story. He really, really, really powered through and kind of forced the industry to recognize the power of bloggers and the voices of, you know, the influence of online voices. Mm -hmm. And so now, uh, you know, multi-million dollar company, a publicly traded company that uh, operates right here out of Orlando. So they had their big, um, Isaiah Fest. They haven't done one for a couple of years. And what they were doing is they brought all their influencers in as well as the brands that utilize those influencers and kind of had a big pepper alley for Isaiah Fest. But what he did was he launched his suite of tools and new software that helps brands and bloggers kind of manage these online line campaigns and kind of measures the reach and kind of helps measure um, really what a blogger's voice is or an online influencer's voice. For example, um, I'm big on Twitter but I have nothing on Instagram, mm -hmm. whereas somebody else might be huge on Instagram, but not on Twitter. And so how does a brand kind of measure right. what each one of those is worth? And right. so he's kind of engineered some of that. So really interesting stuff. Hola, Joe. Hi, um, you are welcome to join. I don't see you right now. Thank you. Hmm. So I, um, I see MS Internet Marketing down there. Yes. Yeah, so... Um, Simulation, thank you, City Wit, for putting that down there. And then wholesale oh, grad there. Woohoo. I kind of looked at who Ola Joe was on Twitter. I think you can drop him. I don't, I, I, okay. They don't seem to have anything. I have going a question there. about studies. Oh, there he is. Uh, Go, Ola Joe. <laughs> what do you think about uh, 
physical therapist or medicine? Physical therapy, I don't think is inside our realm right now. Um, maybe with some of the 3D printing and the technologies that they're doing with that. I'm, I know technology is heavily involved with physical therapy, but I'm not sure that's within the scope of us three, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Which one I think the link that I put said the simulation information. I know Medical City uses a lot of simulation. I don't know specifically a physical therapy, but I know they have like uh, some like dummies that you can practice on before you practice on your child or okay. things like that. So definitely sure. check that link out. Okay. Well, I'm gonna put Isaiah down here for people to check out as well. Um, we are bloggers, so that has an interest for a lot of a lot of bloggers do use that. There, there's other companies out there. Um, Social Fab, there's other other ones that do it, but Isaiah really does a very nice job with it. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, uh, Dixon, jump on. Tell us about your experience at Full Sail. That'd yeah. be fun to have somebody on there with us. Yeah. So definitely jump on there. Um, so that kind of takes care of Isaiah Fest, and uh, now you want to get to our top tools. Whitney, before you go, tell us hmm. what is your favorite social media tool that you utilize? Tool or network? Either one. Either one. Probably Buffer. Yeah. I like Buffer just because I can populate my Twitter without like retweeting a million things at once. So that's really helpful for me for personal and work. Um, and then I don't know. I think I'd probably have to say Twitter's my favorite. Yeah. Second is Instagram. I don't know. I just feel like I'm the most. Uh, ridiculous on Twitter. So it's the most fun for me. Okay. Also all the memes <laughs> and stuff like that. So, so I'm going to do a page it. document and keep track of the tools that we mentioned. So, so far we've said Buffer and Twitter. Excellent. So how is Buffer different from Hootsuite? I'm done with Are you okay. off? Wait, wait, before you go, how is Buffer different from Hootsuite? So um, Buffer has, I mean, Hootsuite has it now too, which is auto schedule, mm -hmm. but Buffer uh, gauges your insights so, to see like when your fans are online. Oh, okay. So when, yeah, when a post would perform the best. So then it schedules based on that, right. which is pretty helpful. It is. As well as like, you don't have to like schedule for a specific time and just kind of throw it up there. And it's just one less step. Very cool. I do not use, I, I think Professor Josh uses Buffer. So maybe I'll have to check it out. Yeah. yeah, I know Laura Kern loves Buffer too. Yeah, I'm a Hootsuite fan. I think it's just because I got started on it first. Yeah, we use Hootsuite for work. So. Okay. Yeah, I, think I use Buffer. Collaborations, Hootsuite works pretty good. But for Buffer, there's a lot of ways that Buffer actually integrates with other apps to make it even easier um, to share content. Like if you're using Feedly or if you're using other like RSS, you know, or post RSS readers, um, they just integrate really, really well. Especially if you're on a Mac, you can integrate really, really well on a lot of different sites um, for you know, cultivating your content right to Buffer, which again, like what Whitney was saying, how it looks at, uh, you know, your engagement at whatever mm -hmm. time of the day, whenever it's optimal for that post. That's the other thing too, depending on what kind of post you say or that you're, that you're posting, it's going to analyze that post and say, this post will work good at this time and this post will work better at this time and then do it for you. Wow. That's impressive. Yeah. And the browser plugins are really helpful too. Yeah. All right. Well, good. Those are awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And bye, Whitney. Jump back on yeah, later if you want to. On. Yeah. So we have an open seat if anybody wants to join. We're talking tools today. So let's go ahead and stay for just a minute in the social kind of media tools that were here. So um, she liked Buffer. I'm a fan mm -hmm. of Hootsuite. Mm -hmm. um, what I like about Hootsuite is simply because I... <laughs> hey, Joe, are you just going off Blab? Oh, no, I'm just showing. I'm just showing everybody. <laughs> that's Dennis. That's Dennis Diamond from from Sears. Hi, Dennis Diamond from Sears. I know your name from Joe. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Hello, I'm John. Hi, John. Hi, <laughs> John. And there's Dennis. There's there's Joyce. Joyce. Hi, Hi Joyce. Hello. <laughs> hey, Joyce. Has he taken you? Has he gotten you a, a, an appointment at the spa yet? What? Has he gotten you an appointment at the spa yet? No. And I was telling him he should listen to you. Oh, look at her face. See, I told you. She's <laughs> she getting in trouble she... now. There's Elgin Ward. Hi, Elgin Ward. All right. Hey, Joe, we're trying to have a blab here, babe. I know. Sorry. I'm just showing everybody. Yes. See ya. See ya. Bye. 
<laughs> He's having fun. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, he loves blab. So he does a blab every Wednesday night for swimming. Okay. And he has a ton of, like, he's had a couple Olympians on with him talking. So really impressive people on. So M. Dixon says, I've taken the program at Full Sail University online, mm -hmm. but the instructors in the online platform is second to none. I'm an avid coder, but understanding of internet marketing made me understand more about creating solutions for clients. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. So thanks, thanks for sharing it. You know, um, about the online uh, uh, professors too. Yeah. yeah, I think they have like 20,000 students and half are online students, half are, and actually it may be more than that now. So mm -hmm. university, you know, Full Sail is not a small university. It's a pretty, pretty good size. So. Okay. All right. So what I like about Hootsuite is the ability to be able to schedule. And I only use Hootsuite for Twitter. Okay. I don't auto uh, schedule anything for Facebook. You can use uh -huh. Instagram on there now or anything like that. So, um, and actually I rarely auto schedule a lot on Hootsuite. I just like the idea that I can see mentions, I can follow a hashtag and kind sure. of see it all laid out. For sure. Me. I'm a big fan of that authentic tweeting in the moment. Now, occasionally sure. we'll schedule posts for Florida Swim Network to go out throughout the day. Just, you know, I've, I've posted five stories this morning. I don't want to send them all out at this morning, but I'm constantly on there checking throughout the day. Mm -hmm. So, so Hootsuite. Let, let me jump in on that though, because I think that's a, those are some really good points. I think that um, having the dashboard that Hootsuite offers you to see what's going on in all in, in, in all those ways, I think you're ideal. I, um, I, I've heard that, you know, using uh, scheduling your posts, um, you know, exclusively isn't, isn't a good idea and could hurt your, your social media rating, or if you still follow clout, things like that. Um, it's not really the ideal thing to do. You still want to kind of blend in, uh, those, those natural or more, you know, organic, if you will, uh, you know, messages and posts throughout your networks. What's nice about buffer two though, I, I forgot about this earlier is that it allows you to actually, uh, send your post that one post, uh, you know, to other networks, all to all these other networks at the same mm -hmm. time, like LinkedIn, like Google Plus, right? Um, you know, and so on. And so what's ideal about that is that a lot of times we kind of forget that we have these all these other networks, and it's like, oh, I'd like to push content to it, but I'm not really thinking about it. This kind of allows you to do that all at once. But I do agree, it's it is better. It's it's good to have balance. You know, you definitely want to yeah. be more natural. You know, in the moment with conversations as things are coming. I think that what we did, you know, especially with WordCamp um, Orlando coming up in a couple of weeks um, and, pa and past years, and especially even with um, uh, uh, with Florida BlogCon, you know, like I scheduled tweets for that because it was an upcoming event and that kind of makes sense. But, you know, specific things like I wouldn't say, you know, I wouldn't schedule specific things that, that wouldn't seem as genuine for the time that they would come up. Yeah. So a great example that I always use whenever I'm, whenever I'm talking about being authentic. Um, so way back when the news about Osama bin Laden broke. So, um, you know, I was up, we were up watching TV. It was late at night and, you know, Wolf Blitzer breaks in and says, we have, you know, Ob President Obama is going live shortly. We, we don't have confirmation of what it is. And yeah, I remember that. And yep. so yep. we jumped on Twitter because Twitter knows everything. So we yep. jumped on Twitter and we were busy looking. So, you know, of course we knew the entire story before the news would say anything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everybody, everybody, every, every, everybody on Twitter at that time was tweeting about Osama bin Laden. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was not one person that was tweeting anything else. Right. It was late at night. And that's all anybody was paying attention to. It was all over every network. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then you would see the automated tweet come up with, you know, try these three tools to sell your content. And it yep. was like, really? Yep. yep. No, I mean, it was so glaringly yeah. out of line yep. that now that's part of my advice to people is if a national emergency or if a national thing comes up, you better jump on and delete those auto automated tweets. Really? So, all right, we got Joshua Johnson joining us. All right. Yeah. So let's see if he can jump on. I wonder if he's out by the pool again. Hmm. Yeah, so so Hootsuite, but really I think TweetDeck, Hootsuite, Buffer, yeah. they all probably deliver about the same. It's just what your comfort level is. Good morning, yeah. Joshua. Good morning. How are you? What's up, man? I'm well. How are you? So do you have a favorite social media tool? Um, I've got a few, but I was going to say along the lines of the, the current conversation, um, yeah. oftentimes when we think about scheduling content, it's kind of a set it and forget it mentality. Mm -hmm. And the set it mentality is fine. The forgetting it mentality is not. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's where you just kind of have to pay attention. And, and you still need to know what your schedule is. You need to know when your content is going to be going live so that you can still be there to interact. Yeah. More importantly, 
don't schedule things that are conversational, right? Like it's, it's fine to schedule uh, an article about the, the 10 best ways to do this or something along those lines or mm -hmm. a reminder of an upcoming event. But if it's supposed to be conversational, don't schedule a tweet, for example, that has a question when you're not going to be there to respond right. to people as they are hopefully responding to you. Right. Uh, and then and then if there, if you're going to be posting anything that can be at all controversial, then by all means, schedule it, but just be ready to monitor respond. it. Yeah, because I mean, that, that happened in the last year or so uh, with a local professional sports team. Uh, you know, they, they post something and I think it went up over a weekend. And, <laughs> and did, was, I watched it. Yeah, and there was and there was like so the whole thing kind of unravels over the course of two days with no one paying attention to what's going on, and yeah. obviously you know it, the the intent wasn't there to to uh, to upset anybody, mm -hmm. but it started to, and it could have a couple quick replies uh, could have put the, everything to to bed pretty quickly. Um, yeah, but instead, yeah. it just it just steamrolled through the weekend and got you know got pretty pretty bad. Yeah, so, so the gist of it was a sports team that tweeted, hey, to get your girlfriend to like this, whatever, you know, right. buy her this. And I guess it was a pink jersey or something like that. Right. And, you know, the idea was fine. But a lot of people said, well, can a girl like sports on their own? What do you mean? And so it turned in kind of this this sexist, which wasn't intended. Right. In fact, you're right that they did not then respond. And then the, car, you know, the social media countdown started one hour and no response. And right. so it turned you're absolutely right. So excellent, excellent point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah excellent so, point. But yeah. aside from that, one of the tools I really like is Crowdfire. Um, I that. It, it's, uh, it's a great app for Instagram. It also works for Twitter. Um, and it's a great app for finding people uh, to, to follow, essentially, because you can go and copy followers of people that you already like. Um, you know, so if somebody is, has you know, similar content to you, it's easy to find the people who already appreciate that type of content. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Chef good Dennis. morning, Chef Dennis. Good morning. How are you doing? I am good. I haven't seen you for a whole two days. I know, a couple of days. Isn't that a sh it's terrible? I Dennis was out at Isaiah Fest with us. He got he got the money shot with Mario Lopez. I'm telling you, I don't know oh. what pumpkin truck I fell off. <laughs> I fell off into some some serious stuff. I also had dinner with Ted Murphy, nice and partner. And a couple other people. I thought I was going to this big thing, and it was six of us. And I was like, "Wow, nice, That's pretty." Because intimate. you are an important person, Chef Dennis. <laughs> I, I I don't know. I'm I'm still not buying into that. <laughs> Thank you, though. So, what? Um, briefly going back to to IZFS, what was your favorite thing about IZFS? I just love being able to network. You know, I always come away with something that I learn at conferences and you know sometimes more than others sometimes just to be entertained is a good thing and there was definitely a lot of that there uh, but just being able to, to network and talk to people and see old friends make new friends mm -hmm. and, and get you know like i said if you get one like that bite about the hashtag you know people i i hadn't heard of it and it was like not a good hashtag i forget who shared what but it was not a good thing to be using their hashtag for something a little inappropriate Mm. Right. Which wasn't, but not on that tag. Uh, mm -hmm. But just learning these little things. And, you know, it's it's nice to get pumped up every now and then. And there was a lot of that going on, too. A lot yeah, of it was a great, great kind of pep rally feeling. It was great. So I do have to ask, and I was a little skeptical. I had to leave. Uh, my son came in town, so I had to leave a little bit early. I did not get to hear Mario Lopez. Does he actually know that much about social media or networking? Does he do his own stuff or is it a publicist that does it for him? You know, I think he does some of his own stuff and he is a very good, uh, he ran one of the sessions. Yeah. Very good moderator. He is, he is definitely good at that. I mean, that's what he does. I mean, he asks yeah. questions on extra. Right. Uh, he, he was insightful, uh, but I think a lot of it was just he was a pretty face too. Uh, that he is. So, yes, I, I would agree. With that. <laughs> but, you know, he is working with him. He is the face of a, of a brand. He is a celebrity. And I think the session that he was there to talk about was really brands working with celebrities and how uh, how that's used. So uh, he I think he does do some of his own social media, but he didn't talk that much about it that, that I remember. Anyway, mm -hmm. he may have when I was my mind was elsewhere. <laughs> All right. So to uh, to our uh, topic of the day, our top 10 tools. So we've already brought up, let's see, we brought up uh, Buffer and Hootsuite and talked about uh, using those as great tools to schedule authentic things. Uh, Dennis, what's one of your favorite tools that you would use? 
five, four, your my, hand, my your hand. hand. <laughs> I use no tools. <laughs> oh, I'm so bad. No, Google Hangout you use. We consider that a tool. Is that a tool? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Sure is. It's a network. For scheduling, I, I don't schedule anything. Okay. I mean, I, I just do it when I do it. Uh, the only th tool that I use, if you would call it one, is Instagram. Mm -hmm. And Instagram I use to send to Facebook and to Twitter. And a friend of mine, uh, Kita Roberts from Past the Sushi and Girl Carnivore, told me about an app called IF. T T yeah. T if this, then that Yes, where you can make recipes. And now I have my Instagram pictures showing up as native pictures on Twitter rather mm -hmm. than just that little uh, link, the link to it. Yeah. Yeah. I, and, and I also built some, um, some lists from it and it put people on a list that I don't even know. So now I know them. So that's pretty cool. Okay. If this then that is, is has a lot of power outside of just social stuff. So for mm -hmm. example, one of the settings I have, um, I use it a few just for personally. Um, one of them is that it turns my ringer on after 8 a.m. So and it turns it off at like midnight. So if I forget to turn my ringer off on my phone, it, does it automatically that? turns off at midnight and it kicks back on at 8 a.m. And the other thing it does is it allows you to kind of geotag stuff. And so when I come home, it will remind me to turn on my Wi-Fi on my phone. No way. Yeah. So that way, when I'm home, I'm using my Wi-Fi instead of you know using my my uh, data plan. That's awesome. So yeah. you know your stuff too. You're not just another pretty face. <laughs> <laughs> no, I married that one. <laughs> she knows her stuff too, though. Don't sell her. Oh, shirt. absolutely, absolutely. There's a there's a good amount of recipes that are out there. You could you could Google. There's a good a uh, good couple of articles that people have posted about like some top ten uh, recipes or whatnot. Um, I did see you know a couple of those too. I would definitely you know say look into that. Okay. So um, we have Sprout Social listed, listed down here, and I agree, um, you know, they all bring, you know, slightly different things, but they all kind of accomplish that same idea of, of helping you handle the, the social media world. Twitter, I know, is a big one with it. And I do have to chime in. So at Orlando IX, um, I got to see Rusty Parch. Joshua, you know Rusty. Mm -hmm. um, He's a social media director for Chipotle and they have like over 700,000 followers on Twitter. And he was laughing that he always gets the question, how do we manage that many people? And he said, my guys, and they're a very small team. He said, we use the Twitter app. <laughs> hmm. He said, we do it entirely through the Twitter app. And he said, it's just authentic and it works well for us. So he said, we don't use any fancy tools. So don't feel like you have to use all these fancy tools, especially any that you have to pay for or anything, because there's plenty of free stuff out there that, that you can use. There is, yeah. Uh, right. well, the reality is that, that I mean, a lot of these tools, they're just they're allowing you to put a system in place. But oftentimes it makes sense to build your own internal system. And that doesn't mean building a tool. It just means building a process that you use that you can rely on. Right. You know, a lot of times these these tools are shortcuts to do that. But that doesn't mean that there aren't, aren't more you know efficient ways or better ways for your team to be able to communicate. Yeah. And that's why it's so important for you to understand what your processes are without tools. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to rely heavily on TweetDeck and then Twitter bought it and, and just junked it. You know, but I knew what all my processes were, so I could pick up Hootsuite and, and move everything over or just go straight back to using the Twitter app. And I was very comfortable doing that yeah. um, because I, was, I wasn't so reliant on what they did. I was, re I was reliant on the function they did, but I knew what those functions were and how I could recreate those other places. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, you know what, uh, Joshua, you're like our bumper sticker guy. You have all these great sayings that <laughs> we could put on there. And, you know, it's the process, not the tools. And you're absolutely right. Yeah. Um, so Steven says, I use Twitter for iPhone. I do as well. That's the one that I use the most on there. And uh, yep, right tool for the right job. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's leave. Um, so social media uh, management, let's go to some that I want to recommend. That's one of my favorite tools. I just recommended it yesterday. And it's uh, so I, I'm a big fan of WordPress for bloggers. But regardless of what uh, content management delivery system you use, if I'm reading that blog post, there better be a way for me to share it out. Mm -hmm. And I, um, I help moderate a, a Facebook group of, of uh, bloggers. And a lot of times I'll go to their site and check it out and I'll read this great blog post and there's no way for me to share it out. Mm -hmm. And it, I'm like, you know, I would have loved to tweet that out, but I'm yeah. not going to do the five steps. It's going to take me of copying, going to Twitter, pasting it. Mm -hmm. So um, one of my favorite sharing, so having the social media buttons is Shareaholic. So that's one of my favorites. I just recommended it again yesterday, but yep. make sure you have some way 
for somebody reading your blog post then share it out yeah so shareaholic's a great one yeah yeah it's pretty easy to configure too because it gives you all these options it even i think uh it even gives you it got pinterest in there if you use pinterest and google plus um you know all of that stuff is in there yeah i've, I've been using it for years also so yeah I, I recommend it yeah um anybody have any others that they like besides shareaholic I do use tell a friend, I think it is on Google plus. So it sends stuff to LinkedIn. And so I guess I do use a couple of tools mm -hmm. <laughs> LinkedIn and Twitter. Um, but that was just set up a long time ago. So it just kind of runs itself. So is that one um, specific to Google plus or can you use it on your blog? I think it's specific to Google plus. I, I do have all the little social buttons on my blog mm -hmm. after the post so they can share because you, you have to make it easy for them or yeah. they people won't do it, you know, and, and I don't blame them. I, I wouldn't either. I have, I have a question. Have, have, and, and this is for, you know, you guys here on the panel, as well as you guys in the chat room. Um, how do you guys feel about if you go to a blog post and you want to comment on something, but then they, you have to comment by logging into a platform like Discus or Facebook. Do you, are you hesitant about that or do you go ahead and, and do it? Um, you know, what's your thoughts on that? I personally hate it. Yeah. I will do it one time, and if it fails, I'm sorry, I'm gone. And then you're out. I mean, yeah, you know, I'll try. All right, I have all those accounts, and I'll try and log in. But a lot of times, you don't remember the password because sure. you don't ever use Discus. So, sure. Uh, uh, so it, it's it's just a pain that, and I, you know, I moderate my comments. I have a spam filter. Sure. The ones where you where you type someone up and you don't know if it went through or not because you can't see it. I don't like when people moderate every single comment like, right trust if they they don't have those filters on where they know who they can trust mm -hmm. uh, so that bothers me too okay joshua well uh well first question is it discus or discuss discuss you got me on that one <laughs> i always pronounced it discus i, I probably is discuss that Maybe yeah, someone said discuss, discuss yeah. and I went, oh my God, that makes so much more sense <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> yeah, that is on the same page <laughs> Okay, cool. So um, I, I personally am, I am not a huge fan of the anonymity that is allowed when people don't log in through some sort of platform to give some verification as to who they are. Okay. Um, there's enough trolls in the world and um, and they, they live and they thrive in places where they can hide behind, you know, nothing, you know, where, where there's a least amount of effort that goes into actually verifying somebody exists. Sure. Um, you know, so I, I personally don't mind. Um, I don't mind having a history of my comments. I mean, anything I, I say, I assume anything I say anywhere at any time is being recorded and will be published. Sure. Um, and I still say things that will get me in trouble. You know, like that's just that's just the way that it, it goes down. Um, but I'm okay with that. That's you know? how men operate. We we yeah. Before we think. Right. Exactly. I can only communicate that to my 19 year old. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and I, I, I of course try to communicate that to my students as well. And then I see some uh, some of their online interactions. Um. Right. You know, by <laughs> you know, I mean, do they that. Say, um, they say it's going to be controversial a little bit sometimes when you're when you're commenting on some on some on something. It right? can be, and sometimes it, it should be. You know, and, and other times it shouldn't. Um, you know, I, I can understand why some people are much more hesitant to do so. Um, you know, obviously, if you're commenting on somebody else's blog, you have a lot less control over what happens after you comment and and right. where that conversation goes. Um, but you know, at the same time, from what I've seen across the internet, there's a, comments are down. Um, and I think a lot of that's just because more people blog themselves now. And so now you see yeah. a lot of the comments of like, just a quick, Hey, that's cool. And then you know, yeah. of course they leave their URL back to their blog. Yeah. Um, and so like the real meaningful dialogue for me happens around blogs, but not necessarily on them. You know, like I'll read something in a blog and then that turns into real life conversation with somebody I'm going to see in the next two hours. Mm -hmm. Um, or maybe more of a direct conversation with somebody else online that I okay. know, um, rather than the open platform on that blog and, and then have the conversation there. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So I know in the blogging world, at least here in Central Florida, that's been a huge discussion with lots of bloggers closing their comments um, for a variety of reasons. Either uh, they don't want to be judged if they don't have a lot of comments. Really? Um, yeah. And actually, um, so, you know, a lot of bloggers are like, you know, I have readership, but nobody ever comments for whatever reason. Maybe they're not right. You know, if it's a recipe or something, they may not say, hey, great recipe. They may just take it and use it. So, um, but so they close for that reason. Others, I know there's a big discussion at Growing Boulder about closing comments simply because what Joshua just said, if somebody likes it, 
they can't comment, so they're going to take that conversation to Twitter or they're going to take that conversation to Facebook. So I know for um, all our blogs, um, we don't have any comments on it. And it really, we have those share buttons. And so it gives them a voice to be able to say something about it. And I think that really increases the shareability and that, that it forces people to comment on it by sharing it out. So and then, so they'll so comment then on that, Twitter. So then is the responsibility then shifting from, from you moderating your comments, like what I would say myself and maybe Chef Dennis are more used to, to what, what Joshua was saying, to where you carry the conversation on these social media platforms about the topic. Yeah, I think it's more um, carrying on that conversation to a different platform where other people will see it. It's so interesting, though. For me, if especially if it's a serious topic, you know, I, I don't mind. I, I love talking to people that I don't know and kind of getting their, their viewpoint. Um, yeah. But especially if it's something that's serious and I'm, and I'm really trying to understand something, I'm going to turn to the people on my network. Um, and I want to turn to a place where I can, you know, a little bit more safely have that conversation. Hmm. Um, and if I have it on some, you know, blog somewhere, then there, there's just, there's no control. There's no security with that. Um, and things can easily, you know, spiral out of control versus if I, if I share it on, on my Facebook page, for example, you know, I, I can have that conversation with, with the 800 people or so that I'm connected to on Facebook rather than the entire internet. Um, and then if I want the internet's opinion, I can always go to Twitter or somewhere else. Hmm. Um, but you know, it's just, there's there's so many different aspects that it's hard to control. One one um, misstep with something you say on a blog and it turns into a three thousand comment thread, which you know rarely exists now except for when the trolls come out, um, and then it, and then just goes absolutely you know sideways. Um, and the other thing I think that's really important to think about as far as bloggers go is you know I think bloggers often get attacked if they moderate comments or if they shut them down um, because they say well you're silencing my voice and, and of yeah. course I love hearing people say my right to free speech which they clearly do not understand what that means um, it's a blog that I own <laughs> right exactly exactly um, but the, but the truth is as a blogger or as a website owner that has a blog mm -hmm. um, you also you you should have a priority to take care of your audience and the people who do come there and to protect yeah. them um, and, and sometimes that does mean protecting them from negative stuff that is not at all involved in a conversation, that is not yeah. all, that not just because it's critical of what you're saying or what you're doing, mm -hmm. but because it's it's not even constructive, you know, um, at all. And, and it does not actually add any value. It's just simply there to tear people down. Yeah. Um, Obviously, my wife blogs about fashion, uh, and you know, if you if you saw people going on there and and tearing her apart about her body or things like that, she oh, is thin. Wow. And you know, but if somebody says, "Oh, well, look at how I'm not even going to going to say anything," but if somebody made some comment about her body, um, you know, then that can immediately transfer to her, her other readers who might be slightly larger than her. Um, you know, if they're saying that she was too big in one way, or they might be smaller than her, and they're saying that she's too thin or something like that. I and, see. And they're all directly impacted by that. Sure. So does she still allow comments? I don't remember if she does on her blog or not. Yeah, she does. Okay, and I know on. I mean that that and she she's a popular enough blogger where she's almost celebrity status, where she does face a lot of, of controversial comments for whatever reason. She, she has a lot of people that absolutely love and worship her too. Mm -hmm. um, but so she has that problem on, you know, on, on Facebook. I've seen people sometimes just put comments that you're like, what is with you? Right. So, I mean, yeah, I think, I think, you know, bloggers are extremely brave because they put themselves out there and all sorts of different forms. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, and I would never take any kind of a question to Facebook because there's too many crazies there. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it's just really, unless you're in a closed environment, a private community where you can ask your peers, someone that's really responsible when you have those questions, but to mm -hmm. post it on your Facebook page is like asking, is flirting with disaster. Uh, as a blogger, though, I always leave my comments up. Although, like I said, I do have a spam filter on, which catches almost everything. Okay. Uh, and especially if they've never left comments before, then it makes me approve them. Yeah. But I like so I'm going to read some real quick comments. We've got a great chat going on. So Jed Records says, if you turn, wait, wait, now I've, I've lost. I got to go up. <laughs> um, um, so Jed Records says, I like the idea of pushing comments to social media platforms. That, that was our uh, reason for turning it off. And it's worked very well for us. Um, if you turn off comments, though, you need to be listening socially. So absolutely. So if you turn off comments and somebody tweets about it, you've got to be there on Twitter to see that they tweeted and then engage in conversation there. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, some closed comments for poaching reasons or eliminating sharing. And I understand it's frustrating to interact with. Yeah. So if you can't ha if you don't have a way to interact with that blogger, it can be hard. 
Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, Rocker Life Coach says, comments on a site is what got my blog in the top 100 blogs for entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Excellent job. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. uh, City Wait, you're right. The crazies are all over, definitely. <laughs> um, so Rocker Life says, I have a system I teach to make blog comments work to your advantage. All right. Yeah, there's all sorts of, uh, I know, uh, mommy conferences, that's taught a lot, how to how to create that blogging tribe for you that will comment for you and use that. So that's a okay. very common system, or a, I'm not gonna say very common system, but it is a, a system. Okay. Uh, the demographics of Facebook are too large to manage sometimes. That's from Mr. Michael, absolutely. So wow, great conversation. So yeah, yeah. So um, I'm gonna, since we're trying to get to our, our top tools, I'm gonna leave. So we've gone from social networking tools to- um, Sharing and commenting. Sharing and commenting. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going, because I have them right here. I want to get to them. So um, <laughs> producing content. Ah. So hardware. So I'm going to show some of the stuff that I have real quick. So my absolute favorite thing. So we do a lot of video. We do a lot of interviews. Are you leaving, Chef? I, I'm sorry. I have to run. I have to get ready for my show. I'll see you. That's in fine. Uh, tune in. Bye. Bye. So uh, we do a lot of video. And... Uh, so we have big, big thousand dollar cameras, but a lot of times we'll just use our, our iPhones mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, audio is key. So we use what's called an iRig microphone. So iRig is the brand mm -hmm. and uh, they're about $75, but it's nice because they plug in like if you have an iPhone five or six, oh, they plug it just like that. Yep. Okay. So you plug it just right into the bottom. And there it is. And so you can interview away and nope. get great, great audio. So there's that one. And then there's another one. And this is a Rhodes microphone that actually is mm -hmm. the same thing, but it's a lavalier. Yep. You can plug it right into your iPhone or iPad and it gives great, great quality sound. Um, and then, of course, you have uh, the Olo clip that allows you to put a lens. Oh, OK. Yep. Um, so that fits right onto your iPhone. So just right on to it okay. right there. And uh, I have it for this one, it's a dual one. You have a, a, a wide lens or a, a fish eye. Okay. And so those are about $100 if you go with the two lens. And then uh, my last tip for if you're going to be using an iPhone or an iPad to capture video, it is HD, but only if you hold it absolutely still. Mm. If it shakes even a little, the picture is not what you want. So if you can get... Um, so we use this for the iPad. So this one, the brand is Makayama. It's about 60 to $70, but it allows you to put um, a light on it. So okay. it fits right on there. Yep. Um, you can do, it has a, a port for a microphone if you want to do some type of shotgun microphone or anything like that. And so, and then you just stick it right onto your tripod and then it's absolutely still and so we'll use this for even some of our television shows that we produce nice this is great great video yeah the only disadvantage for um ipad and iphone that we we sometimes run into is the autofocus mm. and so it kind of focuses kind of weird sometimes since okay. so we have to watch out for that so but otherwise it's great so with that first one only compatible with iphone 5 you know they have iRig and um, they have two different ones so they have where you can buy it with the iphone 5 or you can get this type of attachment where it plugs right into the um, headphone jack headphone jack and it works that way. And mm -hmm. so this one's compatible with any of them. Mm -hmm. And that one last one was only with the five or six. Mm -hmm. So good question, Mr. Michael. Mm -hmm. All right. So those are my hardware tips for capturing great video. So I'll put up those links for where you can find those things. Yeah. So um, Joshua, you do a lot of video. You have any video tips, tools you like? Um, well, I, I've been doing more photography than, than video lately, okay. um, and probably my my favorite hardware uh, tool is the iFi card. Being able to easily stream the, the pictures I'm taking directly to my laptop, um, and with a slight lag, but I mean it's it's, it's pretty quick to make that transfer. Um, and the other thing is I've been using a Samsung um, NX30 camera lately, which seamlessly uh, connects with my phone, um, and so I can easily just throw all the images from my camera directly to my phone and and post them. Um, within seconds. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I've got, um, I use, uh, a couple of things I use. Uh, I have this, this led light that I use here, um, that I'll either set up on a 
I'll hold it this way so I don't blind everybody, but I'll <laughs> set it up either on a uh, on a little tripod mm -hmm. um, holder, you know, like what I use when I'm when I'm a video, or I'll set up on my camera when I'm doing a video, um, you know, for video recordings, um, you know, in dark places. So that works. I just got a um, a lavalier mic, um, but uh, the one I have has a booster on it because it's a twenty foot cable. Oh wow! Um, and um, that's yeah, not it, it, yeah. So that way, you know, you can still clip it on and you know, kind of throw it behind you or whatever. I'm um, gonna work, and it'll it'll plug into my it plugs into my DSLR and also can plug into a you know to to a phone or a mobile device or whatnot. So that helps out too. What else I do for video? Lighting is everything. I mean, I've got some um, some soft boxes that I use for constant lights. Um, um, they're they're. I would say this the one tip for me in terms of in terms of gear. Um, you know, I started out the cheap way. And eventually the cheap way bites you and stuff starts to break. Hey, you know what I mean? I, and I get it. You know, we, we you know, you're kind of like trying to like, you know, like you know, trying to prove your concept, you know, whether or not you need it or whatnot and, 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 and spending, you know, justifying and spending the money. But, you know, you could start that way, but you'll quickly realize that it's better off to pay for the better brands. Like Rode is a really good brand. You know, Rode mics make fantastic mics. You know, they make a bunch of them for different scenarios, but, you know, they are a little expensive, but they're really worth it. And they're going to last you a very, very long time. And the quality is going to be fantastic. Um, so yeah, my, my tip is, you know, for that, spend the money. Right. Yeah. So yeah, rocker life coach says invest in your business first. You get what you pay for it. Yeah. I absolutely agree with that. Um, many of the bloggers we work with though, do not have that big budget. And so we also like to tell them that, you know, sometimes those tools, especially, you know, we now do a lot of production for television, but when you're producing for the internet, the, the mm -hmm. quality doesn't have to be quite what it has to be for, for broadcast, for TV right. broadcast. Um, so sometimes you can get away with those, with those tools. I mean, iPhone, iPad, they're, they're great cameras. Uh, my husband, I know wants the new i6 4K, uh, uh, phone. So that's what he wants, but, uh, you know, they're, they're getting better all the time. So, um, don't shy away from trying video or photos just because you don't have the expensive well, and you also have to be aware of what can be available to you. Um, I know earlier you mentioned the Orange County Library, um, and in that center, in the Melrose Center, they have a full production studio for both video and photography and audio. You have access to like millions of dollars worth of equipment, um, and you can use it for free if you have an Orange County Library card um, for a couple hours a week, and then you can rent it after that. So, you know, sometimes you don't have the money right off the bat to get what you want or what you need. Um, you have to be creative in order to get access to the stuff that you need. Um, you know, it's, and it's kind of like, you know, say if you're job hunting, right? Like you don't dress for the job you have, you dress for the job that you want. And mm -hmm. sometimes you have to do that with, with your business or with your blog and you have to step up and you have to, to make the commitment and make the investment to get to the next level. It's not, well, when I get to this many followers or this many, whatever, I will buy this. Sometimes yeah. you have to buy this to help you get to that point. Yep. Um, and it's, and I think that's where like that line of, of like, I'm a blogger versus I'm an entrepreneur is where you have to, yep. you have to cross over, right? Like yep. I'm a yep. blogger says like, well, when I get there, I'll do this. When you're an entrepreneur, it says, well, this is a business decision. I need to invest in this now so I can get to that next level. Right. Excellent, excellent point. Gosh, gosh, I'm so glad you joined in today. Thank you, Josh. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank yeah, no, I love it. I love it. Um, so um, that I guess that takes care of where my hardware. Um, but one of the other ones I mentioned that I want to talk about earlier, Mailchimp. Mm -hmm. So um, going to our favorite kind of email. Wait, Joe, you saw? Okay, so I have to hang on. Joe's in the chat room. So he's at a conference <laughs> in Nashville. He saw the Oak Ridge boys there getting ready for, I guess, the CMAs. And apparently Joe says that little Richard lives in the hotel that, he, that, that. they're at. I so he says he saw little Richard hanging out with the Oak Ridge boys. So there you go. Very cool. That, that, so thanks, Joe. Let me know. And by the way, it doesn't count unless you get pictures. That's what I was just about to type. I was, good. I was just about to type him back and say, picture, it doesn't count. So we got Tim Gillette, the Rocker Life Coach, coming on. Hey, Tim, where are you tuning in from? Dallas, Texas. Nice. Hello. Dallas, Texas, Hollywood. It's part of my line for my radio show. There How's we the go. So, All right. I so you're talking about uh, MailChimp. So I want you to say it, and I'm going to give you some some opinions about it. I'm not going to say it's right or wrong, but I'm going to give opinions about it and tell you why I do that. So tell okay. what you're going to say, and then I'll I'll give an opinion. Okay, so what I was going to say about MailChimp is that, first of all, it is free. So a lot of bloggers don't have big budgets to start their email lists, uh, but they have great tools that integrate with WordPress. 
to be able to allow you to grow your email list. And that's one of our number one uh, pieces of advice for new bloggers is start growing that email list from day one. And then, uh, you know, newsletter is a great way to deliver information. It's absolutely free up to 2000. Mm -hmm. And so that is a lot of emails, a lot of free marketing there that you can do. I know a lot of bloggers that pay. In fact, I was just working with one the other day that was paying $45 a month and he had 10 people on his email list. Wow. And I said, no, no, no. We need to switch you to where you're paying zero a month. Yeah. at least until you grow over 10, uh, 2000 people. And, uh, I love the tools. I have uh, several monthly newsletters I do through, um, through, uh, MailChimp. So, uh, the tools that they have, even, even they have a, a tool called gather that allows you to do mass, uh, texting. So it's a, it's a texting service that you can do. I've used those before. So, um, I just like the suite of free tools that they have. So there's my pitch for them. Go for it, Tim. Tell me what you know. Well, I had a list of 20,000 people on MailChimp when I switched to an official shopping cart where I can now market around the world. I lost all of those MailChimp people because they have to double back opt in because the shopping cart goes, they're not serious opt ins. And I've mm. lost a 20,000 person list. I would be pretty mad at MailChimp then too. So I'm not mad at MailChimp and I get why you're doing it. But if you're going to ever go to selling a product online, start with a shopping cart. Okay. My shopping tell cart, us about shopping cart. dollars a month and you can have unlimited number of people in your shop, your list. Now, let me ask you, let me ask you this, Tim, because there is an option with MailChimp where you can choose to not disable the double opt-in. Did you have that set already or no? Yes. They still had to double back opt in into my shopping cart. The shopping cart would not accept it from MailChimp. You think about it, if you're eventually going to go there, invest the 25 or $30 a month now, you know what I mean? Okay. Or the other option is, because you can't, I get where you're going with this best and how you can start there. And I realize some of you don't have money, all right? Is you've got to use, you now have to send out double emails. I could keep my shopping cart. I could keep my MailChimp. I now have to send out an email to the to the email to the MailChimp people to try to get them to buy. Right. Once they come into my shopping cart, now they've opted in. You know what I mean? They've bought from me. Okay. So I mean, that's the way to do it. Because, but if you think that that MailChimp is, I personally say, invest the twenty dollars a month, whatever it costs. Go with even if you buy the paid version of MailChimp, guys. I realize it's it's free and all, but. Well, I'd say invest a little. It is. It, it, I think that if you're operating at that kind of capacity, I, I would. I would say you're. you're there's a couple of things. One, I would say you definitely want to have a backup, but also you. You definitely want to. You know, spend a little bit of money. If you're just twenty twenty thousand people, you probably are selling. If you sell one product a month of whatever it is that you're selling, you're probably paying for that twenty dollars. You know, service. So yeah, I, I definitely say invest in that. Yeah. And I mean, it's just, and it's, you know, see, I said, Bess, I'm not putting it down. I just, that's why I said, I want to give you my opinion. I wanted to share with you what yeah. happened with me. That's yeah. why I love this venue because yeah. you've had a different experience. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I love that you jumped on here and share it. And so I'm actually making notes on there that if you think that you're ever going to want to monetize that through any type of e-commerce that you might want to look at other products. So I have shopping cart down there. Yeah. Absolutely. So, I use, oh, love I it. Use Rockstar cart, which is, which is a version of one shopping cart. An older version of one shopping cart and Rockstar Cart. Um, they have a if you go to rockstarcart.com, they have an affiliate program. So I, that's another thing I do is I, I refer to people to things and I tell them like they, they have three levels. It starts with the autoresponder level, which is the equivalent of your MailChimp list. Mm -hmm. All right. Then it goes up to a, I'm selling products and then I have an affiliate one. And I have the full blown thing because at the rate I'm at, I've got to have full blown. Right. So, but yeah. yeah, I get growing with it. And Bess, I mean, you gave great advice, but guys understand that that list may not convert and you may have to work two lists for a while. Okay. okay. So, all right. Um, so good advice. So what other tools can you share with us? Yeah. Um, yeah. I use that one there for the, for the shopping cart. Uh, the other thing that I use is, is um, I, I know you, are you on blog talk radio Bess? I am not. Okay. A lot of people went with blog talk radio and mm -hmm. uh, I actually went to a, rather than doing a podcast, I do a radio show on a radio network mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, it cost me a little bit of money. But now when I walk up to Larry Wingen at a conference and I go, we well, want to be on my radio show as opposed to be on my podcast, I got his attention. Right. Um, it's positioning. Use tools like that to position yourself 
um, and, and you know, have a, have a conversion rate. Uh, I've learned a lot of fancy tools like SurveyMonkey to find out what my people want. Mm -hmm. And I mean, and uh, there's a way with SurveyMonkey that you can um, ask them a survey. And I tell people short surveys, multiple questions. And then uh, if you have the small monthly version of it, you can then have a link when they're done and they submit their survey to you where it goes over to a sales page. Okay. And you basically go over to a sales page and say, well, hey, thanks for giving me your opinion on that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and there's all, all kinds of tricks with that, but that's a, a tool that I've used to convert quite a bit. A good right now we're in the midst of creating, and yeah, you're on the record. So if anybody here knows what I'm about to do, I'm in the midst of creating a, a, uh, a, a video newsletter. Mm -hmm. So it's like my listeners are my, my people who sign up for my list are going to be able to get a video newsletter from me every okay. week. Nice. So will I, will I actually play in their inbox or will they have to click to go to a different it's link? It's going to be on my site. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And it's like, you know, we were talking some of the comments and stuff. Everything I do is I want them on my site. Yeah. Sure. I'm trying to get you off of, I, I love this platform lab, but I really want you on my website. Mm -hmm. Well, it's embedded on our website right now. People yeah, are watching. That's, on I'm doing website. that now with blogging and, and, and my nightly, why I do my nightly rock around your blog ones I put on my website. Yeah, yeah, I, I was thrilled when uh, I kept I uh, kept tweeting Shane VP saying, "Please let us in, embed the live blab. I've got to have it." So uh, they finally did it. So I'm thrilled with it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So where can they find? Where can we find more information about you, Tim? Yeah, uh, I have uh, timgillette.com. My name T I M G I L L E T T E, just like the razor blade. Mm -hmm. uh, dot com, and then uh, I I have other things like timgilletteradio.com, which is my radio show which I'll be live in 40 minutes. Uh, yeah. And uh, then uh, you know, I have a rock around your blog, which is a new site that we've created. That's the newest program we do on helping people take their personal story, build a personal brand to blog about their product or service. Okay. All so right. I don't teach blogging like you do best. I teach people how to get their information. Okay. What's uh, I'm going to, and I'm going to use a uh, uh, gene up here. I take your story and put your story onto your blog rather than tell me about all the unique techie things about your product. Mm -hmm. Why are you using that product? Now mm -hmm. I help people interest and I help people build that personal brand. Well, that's one of the things that we definitely teach is that storytelling is going to connect with your readers and your fans. Yes. So uh, I think that's a great piece of advice. Yeah. yeah. So I, I appreciate you letting me stop on. So I'm, I'm not here to hog yeah. your show. I, I, I just, I, you've got a great topic. I love, I was listening to your tips. So thank you. Thanks great. For well, thanks for jumping on. And I hope you'll yeah. join us again sometime. You bet. Well, if I ever get up this early, you know, I'm going to, I'm the late night crowd on Blab. <laughs> hey, we're, real quick, where can we find your radio show if we want to listen? TimGilletteRadio.com will actually take you to the homepage there and then it'll, it'll let you play the player. Okay. So when I inter I've interviewed Larry Wingen on my show, Guy Kawasaki, Bob Berg's been on a couple of times. Bob always calls me and wants to come back. I don't know He's why, but he likes me, I guess. Um, the only person who's ever turned me down for a guest spot on my radio show is Bill Clinton. <laughs> I have the rejection letter to prove it. <laughs> At least I you tried. Framed. <laughs> At least you tried. Yeah, yeah I awesome. did. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Just go out and try because I started as a nobody trying to get on a rate, trying to figure it out. And, um, yeah, my story best is I, I, I got into this because Zig Ziglar told me to. And I'm talking friend, not not heard him speak. When I met Zig Ziglar, I'd never heard him speak and never read his book. And I, I washed his car. Ah, that was a good car wash then. It was so, but when it comes to car washes, is I've made a lot of money in the car wash industry. I couldn't wait to get out of it. So that's funny. All right, well, guys, we've reached uh, our hour limit. Well, I like to try and set an hour on it. We're a little bit over, but uh, Tim, Joshua, thanks for joining us today. Yeah. Joshua, real quick, where can they find you if they want to connect further online? Uh, Twitter or Instagram at Joshua C Johnson. Okay, John. Yep, you can find me um, uh, at JP Design Theory on Twitter and Instagram, or visit my website at jpdesigntheory.com. Fantastic. You can always find me on Twitter at best underscore hour. And you can always check out our television show. It's at Blog Talk TV, uh, playing on Bright House and Cox. Depending on where you live, it may or may not show there, but you can always find it uh, online. We post the links for the replays. So, anyway, guys, thanks for another great week. And uh, this replay will be up soon. 
So I hope everybody has a fantastic rest of the week. If it's raining where you are, I hope the sun comes out soon. So, bye, Thanks. everybody. Thanks, everybody. Bye.